G'day and welcome back to my workbench. Now, quite a few years ago, I picked up this kit on special um, and I, I didn't know what it was. I just thought, look at the snarly mouth and look at the tracks and there's a boat. What the freaking hell's going on here? And um, it is a very unusual subject and uh, hard to pronounce name. Uh, lamb uh, a Waffle Sniffer. Uh, 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 no, uh, Lim Weasel Schnapper. Uh, uh, look, it's, it's German. Uh, land Rubber Schlipper. Well, basically, it translates to a land water tug. You know, we, if you watch my channel, you know we enjoy a good tug on this channel. We do. Now, um, this thing was designed basically around 1940 and uh, went into production around August of that year. And it was primarily for sort of popping around the rivers and helping drag things into place and create bridges and all that sort of thing. And you know, essentially it was literally a little tow truck tug type thing. But the tracks meant that it could go off on the land as well. So it's quite versatile, quite useful. And um, although they never used them for Operation Sea Line because the Germans never invaded um, basically Great Britain, um, not, not with our operation anyway. So um, they went into use all over um, the other um, arenas and they, um, you know, they were, they were quite a sort of fascinating little thing because basically you could tow things into rivers and build bridges and, and get into places that the tanks couldn't get and set up, um, you know, a lot of support. So they were quite useful for the, um, the engineering corps, if you like. So yeah, land washer sliver. Now, this kit by Hobby Boss, it's, it's a lovely kit, really is quite a lovely kit, as, as you'll see as I go through the um, build and the spruce, which is coming up shortly. But, um, there's more than one version of this. This is the medium one, but um, Hobby Boss also produce a late. And um, there's another one which I thought was an early, but actually I think it's just the version before mine, and it's got um, basically rubber rubber band tracks. I've got any links on mine, which actually are very good. And although that seems like a bit of a nightmare because there's 140 links per track, per size, 280 links you've got to cut out, clean up. But don't worry, I'm gonna show later on a method that makes that very easy to accomplish. But if you can't handle that, buy the rubber band track version. <laughs> and then there's a uh, Schlepper 2, which came out later, and Dragon and uh, Hobby Boss produce versions of that as well. I think Hobby Boss does. Bronco produces a version of the um, the mid, like I've built. And they're, they're all beautiful kits. They're all lovely. Uh, but um, the later version 2 didn't have a cabin on top, so it doesn't look so much boat-like. It's more like a little raft. And they used to put two together and put a bridge over the top of it and... <laughs> And they're you know, amazing sort of vehicles. And that was what I found fascinating. Now, the, um, the actual kit uh, instructions, right? I'm not going to go through them in detail, but just to let you know, they are really clear, easy to follow. Uh, there's no problems there at all. It's um, very nicely, very nicely laid out. Look, um, other people might have done reviews and shown the instructions. It's fine. I didn't have one single problem with instructions. Everything they said was there. All the parts went on. The order they suggested was pretty well spot on. Except for the Indie Links, I always sort of do those separately and pull them off so I can paint them. But basically, they um, everything they said was right. They even told you when to put the masks on for the windows and they advised painting interior at the right spot. Great, great instructions. Really a well put together kit and beautifully moulded. And you get a lovely full colour painting guide with two different versions on. This one is pretty full on. It's three colour camo. I'm not going to do that one. I want to do this one because it's got big smiley face. <laughs> well, big shark's tooth mouth, which is what I really liked about the box art. So that's the one I'm going to go ahead with and I'll produce the, um, the same look that's on the box art. So I really like that. I really like the mouth and the two-tone camo is sort of unique and interesting itself. So anyhow, let me go through and show you some images of the sprues and then onto my general build and a few things I did like creating the bumpers, which weren't included in the kit, and, um, and some solutions with the track links. The parts were very crisply moulded with no flash, as I said, and the hull came in two parts, so the uh, top part, the lower part there and uh, the cabin, and here's all the wheels and the track links, which we're gonna talk about later, Be all beautifully done. You've got some PE with it, you've got a little bit of um, cotton, which I'll show you, we'll use that later. You've even got a little jig, uh, but look, couldn't say much, uh, much more about the quality of the parts. They were just excellent. Now I started off building the little bogies and they went together like a little dream. They were lovely, and you can see the um, drives there. Now there were a few little um, 
parts missing off some of the bogies, which were connector rods that had to go back to the um, to the body there. But I just made those out of a bit of uh, evergreen sprue. It wasn't a big deal. It was a five-minute job. And they uh, they all got made in the afternoon. I really enjoyed that. And so it was sometime then after that, I sort of had a break. I had other things. I came back to the kit. And then I decided I'd better start working on um, all the rest of it because I'd uh, just sort of neglected the kit. But... Um, I used my micro liquid tape to join things like the screws at the back there, which I'm going to paint a different colour. And I do that a lot. The, um, there were a few parts that had some injection points and they required filling, but quick job with my uh, perfect plastic putty there. No issue at all. Rubber banded up that rear end, which a lot of people complain about. The um, little winch there, they supplied some cotton for that and you so you could wind it all up, look really good. And it... The kit started to come together very quickly and it started to look really mighty. I was really happy with it. I'd left uh, all the hatches off and I'll do them separately because I wanted to try and uh, build it with them open so we could see inside because there is a bit of an interior provided and I was going to add a bit more inside there and plus there's a few more parts I haven't put on yet so I need painting different colours. Beautiful PE grills there to go on the back um, and that whole winch assembly business at the back there. Lovely, really nicely moulded. And there's the hatches, reverse side of the hatches, all needed injection um, points um, cemented or you know, filled up with the um, putty. But that was my fault. That was basically because I chose to have them open. So uh, if you're just putting them on closed, you wouldn't have to worry about that at all. And handles, top, bottom, everything. Look, this kit went together so well. I was so pleased. Now, you get all of these in the kit. <laughs> And usually I'm a fan of Indie Links and I love Magic Tracks. Magic Tracks are great because you don't have to cut the little buggers off the sprue. And this looks like a nightmare. It looks like there's just, you know, it's going to take forever. Well, actually, these were quite good. And let me show you. I um, eventually, after a bit of messing about, came up with a pretty quick method for doing them that worked perfectly. Now, what I first realised is that there's um, these little nubs here, right? You don't need those, of course, and you're going to cut them off. And the best idea is do them first. So what I'll do is this. I'll cut them off first. Now, I've, lucky I've got these sprue cutters that um, I got really close. These are these little shear type ones, whatever you call them. Um, mini Shima ones, yeah. And I cut really close. Now, I don't cut the other two on each of these. I don't cut the other two little locators there, right? I leave those on there. And the reason being is... That's now a hell of a lot easier for me to get my file to and then just get in there using the two outside parts of the link, right, which doesn't have a um, join on it, using them as a former. So they're basically they're a guide. I can just give that a very light sand and that tiny bit of sprue cut that I've done comes off instantly. All right. Also helps if you cut the ones off on that side. <laughs> now, usually I do four. Usually I do a whole run. I do you know six at a time. So yes, oh, should do what I say, not what I do. Anyhow, uh, so they're basically done. You know, and you can even do like a run. So that's enough. They are cleaned enough on that side. That's enough that they will join perfectly. And uh, having a look. Yep, it's spot on. So now I would get in and cut. Now I've found it was better to cut not from the side with the horns up, but the other side. Um, because basically that's the side that's going to be seen a lot. Side with the horns up, where well you've got wheels and things hiding those. So you really want your um, your best foot forward, and that will be that side. So off that comes, right? Now, this is where one of these little things comes in very handy. And... On with the link, All right? And again, my trusty sandy stick, which I've managed to lose. Here it is. And again, holding it nice and tight in that claspy thing. I think we're done. Now, if you cut out my waffle there, they would do fairly quickly. And I got it down to doing a whole run like that in 15 minutes, okay? And admittedly, you have got, oh, what do you got on to? You've got five, six, six of these frames, and each side's going to take you half an hour. You might even get it down 10 minutes. I think I was getting pretty fast towards the end. 
yeah, you, you're up for at least a couple of hours work, sure. But put some, you know, put the TV on, put your favourite music on, and away you go. And these aren't too bad. I've done ones that are a lot worse and a lot harder. These clean up very quickly, and that's what I'm trying to say. And that simple method, um, it must sort of seem obvious, but really you can be trying to hold these in your hand and they're falling around wobbling. Now, there's a, there's a very simple method for um, cleaning up any links. Do half on the sprue, so you've got firm, they're held firm and you can really get in and do them. Although, cut off both sets of nubs because it's easier to get your file in. Then when you cut it off, have something to hold the link in. Because, uh, I don't know, I've got big fat fingers and everything. I, and these are tiny links, these are like pans are two, pans are one type links, tiny. So as long as you've got something, and they, these are good, these little um, clampy tweezer things. So, you know, and then I give an extra squeeze. And now I can basically get in there so easily and just so, so there you go you, you'll knock you'll knock those off in seconds literally 15 30 seconds each you should do you know if you at speed you could do a run in about 10 minutes so there you go this will take 20 minutes all up six of them two hours work easy first i try to use the jigs by the kit but i found that the uh the links start sticking to the jig because i couldn't get them to assemble without gluing them so i put a bit of tape on there but that didn't work they jammed in with the tape eventually i gave up and i went back to my tried and true method which i'll put a link for in the uh, description of doing them on the reverse side of tape with a rule works perfectly every time and then i wrap them round, put my cotton buds in perfect i was really happy with the way those track links turned out one of the things missing from the land of waffle schlapper is um the boat bum prowls. They're supposed to have these. They're on all the um, the box art, and if you do any research and look at photos online, you'll see they're there as well. But for some reason, they omit them in the kit. You can, however, spend twice as much as I pay for this kit and buy aftermarket resin ones. But I thought that's a bit outrageous and pointless, and I sort of had a big think about it. But well, how hard can it be to make your own? And the answer is not bloody hard at all. <laughs> I um, actually knocked these up. I made a set in about half an hour. So how hard were they to make? Well, turns out not very hard at all. I uh, found this for a couple of dollars at my um, my grocery store actually, and it's uh, it's a thicker cotton. I don't know if it's what we used to call number ten cotton for kites, but it sort of looks like that. It looks about that sort of gauge. It's not very wide. If I um, just do a quick check. It's uh, about two millimetres, is all it is. So what's that, about a tenth of an inch? Yeah, it's, uh, it's all right. You probably could go a bit thinner and that would still work, but you don't want to go much thicker than that. And I used some cotton I had around for um, sewing on buttons and that sort of thing. It was just lying around. I chose a slightly brown one so I could see it on top of the, um, you know, the contrast of colour while I was tying. And then I needed some PVA wood glue at the end because uh, with this all twisted and bound up, it can it can unravel, um, as I found, because this one unraveled. This was the first one I made, and it's not quite as tight. The second one I made is is much better. It's nice and tight, and it's more to scale. So I might um, give this one to a friend of mine who wanted a set. But it's all learning. But anyhow, I'm going to make another one of these, so I'll show you how easy this was. Now, I found it was worthwhile keeping this tense and tight while you were doing it and I remembered this from doing macrame as a kid and how you needed to basically set yourself up a little jig keep things tight then you can tie a knot off and I applied those sort of memories and those principles to this don't know if it's exactly from macrame but I was kind of remembering some knots and things and to me this works so I'll just show you what I did um, those of you that are experts in macrame you can critique later now uh, these things are useful I've got um, I've got a couple of these. They're handy if you can buy them with a weight on the bottom because then they sit really nicely and they're great for positioning parts while you're painting or even if you're trying to glue together something really intricate. You can, um, not only you've got the advantage of these are these sort of tweezers that hold themselves. I think they might be called, I don't know what they're called. They've got a name. I've got, it escapes me at the moment. Some medical term. It's the thing about beep. Okay, so um, yeah, they're sort of clamps of some sort. But I've got two of those, and they worked out perfect for this job. Uh, I also measured up the model, and I found I needed about 25 centimetres or 10 inches. That's 10 of these squares. I'm like an inch board here. I'm, yes, I'm living in an imperial world. Um, so I positioned my two little clamps 
that far apart, right? 10 inches, 25 centimeters apart. And then I've got my, my strand of thick cotton. It's almost like wool, isn't it? And I found seven strands was the go. So starting at, um, starting at one end, I basically just built myself up a little loom. That one would work better if it was up the other way. So um, doing that. Beauty with these because you can pop them open, pop them closed. There we go. That's number one. Talk amongst yourselves. I'll um, just get this going. Okay, so I have seven strands now and by loose weaving like this I can make sure they get tight and so I'm quite sure that um, it's probably off camera as I want so there we go uh, that's that's nice and tight now so I know that that skein should should wrap up nicely so then what I do with each side Clamp off on the loops at that exact spot. Check my tightness. Because if you don't get this tight, it's not going to twist and it's not going to hang correctly. So this is very important. It's, it's that initial stage where you don't want to bugger it up. So through the loops there. There we go. One of them's a bit loose. Is it this one? No. Okay, so have a they look. Yep. They are fine. All right, so look at those. So as a, you've got to try and keep this as tight as possible while you're working on it. Now, one of the very first things you're going to need to do is cut the bloody ball off. Otherwise, you're really be in trouble. Don't you? Yeah, we'll cut the ball off because otherwise it's a, uh, the ball ends up rolling around everywhere and then the cat grabs it. No. So the ball off, what I need to do is, I'll just take that off there, is twist this. And the twist is what gave it the look. I made it so nice. So I twisted and twisted and twisted, just like we used to do with our aeroplanes as a kid. Remember those old bloody balsa wood aeroplanes you used to build with rubber bands? Do you know that? Have you ever experienced that? You used to generation that everything's on bloody digital and all the rest of it, and you've just got into plastic kits. Well, back in the old days when Harry Houdini was a kid, we used to build balsa wood aeroplanes. That's what we did. Yeah, we spent hours and hours gluing the bloody things together and, you know, putting dope bloody tissue on them and stretching it all out over wings and ribs and everything and um, getting them, you know, looking fantastic. And then we put a big rubber band on the inside of them because then we'd, um, we'd rubber band them up and um, that was how you, you powered the propeller. It had a big rubber band in it. So you'd, um, you'd tighten and tighten and tighten and tighten that and away you go and invariably you get a little bit too bloody carried away at some point and the you know the weakness of the bolster and the and all the doped um, skin tissue would just give way and the whole airplane go. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, enough of that waffling, Harry. Denny. There's my wrap. So already I've got pretty well the shape and I've got the thickness that I want. So that's that's looking good. Now I've got a nice weight on this one. But this one over here, I'm going to have to add some weight to it. So I'll, um, I'll just find something else to lay on that and then we'll wrap this up. Got this nice and tight now. I've put, put a uh, couple of lead br bricks down there on the other one and I've uh, set it up diagonally so you can see what I'm doing. Keeping it tight is the trick, as I found. I tried one where it wasn't so tight. It was a lot harder to do. It took twice as long. And um, anyhow, so uh, using the very fine cotton thread, you simply tie off and... This isn't that hard for anybody who knows how to do a knot. Um, I can vaguely remember my knots from the Boy Scouts. So getting the first one on, just like anything, like if you're knitting or anything, it's always that first one. So getting that first one in, I found really tight. You want to actually squeeze and pinch the, um, the binding. And then I'll just... Do that three times each time nice and tight and this will all make sense later believe me 
Seems like I'm just, you know, playing around here with string. Well, I am. It's fun. I mean, I do enjoy working with plastic, but I remember as a kid just working with all tactile things. Anyhow, now I need the next one along. Now I worked out to scale roughly from referencing all the photos that the segments which give this its distinctive look and, and scallop it out, they're about half an inch apart. So that's about 12 millimeters. Okay, so I didn't worry about measuring it too much. I kind of did it by eye, but you could, you could certainly get a, um, you know, a pen and mark all your points along there. And so you know exactly where to go, but I'm just going to wing it. So half an inch to me is about there. Now, three knots is what I found gives about the right thickness of um, separation with these these little little points of, of the, that they have, and um, it also then makes sure that you're really holding on to that um, that twist because this is the thing we don't want that twist to unravel. And and taking it off, I took it off for a test fit when I did the first one, and it did unravel a bit. So there we go. Now notice I am pinching in. I am pinching in. Um, making sure that this sits in nice and tight. Now remember the the real things Weren't made a lot different to this some of them some of the aftermarket ring people have got stuff that looks like netting you, you look at the photos and I don't know a lot of the time it would be twine It would be rope that's all bundled up. They're they're um, they're boat bumpers and you can go and look at in the harbour You know you can basically go and find a real boat modern one and these things still exist although often they're a lot shorter and smaller and they just, um, you know, they don't necessarily run all the way down the side. Sometimes they do. But this is a common naval thingy. But if you, uh, you're you an armour builder and you're um, you're doing this kit for the first time, you're going, what the heck? I don't build ships. What the hell are you on about? Well, that's the explanation. So have I, how many have I done there? Have I done three? I don't know. I'll do another one just to be sure. I don't know. Talking, waffling away, I'm losing count as I go. But anyhow, uh, right, I'll just do a, a few more. Now, if you're not good at knots, because I'm just knotting away here, this is probably obvious, but just in case you're not good at knots, right? <laughs> what I've done is to get the to get the running knot, I'm going over the strand, the big strand, back here around the back, and then through. And that's making a knot. Okay? Simple as that. There's nothing absolutely brilliant about it. But just in case you don't know knots, see I was a I was both a Boy Scout and a Sea Scout. So I got knotted a lot. <laughs> I think I even had my badges for knotting. I must have. It's pretty good. On the second run through, I just run, I don't do a tie knot. I just run basically a loop through because I'm just building up the um, the amount. Now, you know, I've, I've done this so much that I'm pretty fast at it now. The, um, it will naturally go to that point if you've pulled it tight the first time because there's a groove there. Okay, so in that one goes. And then to third one, I do the proper knot over, round the back, under and through. Okay, so I've actually got a proper knot. You can see it's 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 knotted right through there. And um, away we go. Now you want me to show you that one more time? Fast forward if this is boring. I'll just do it one more time. So over, round the back. Okay, here's your loop, through the loop, and pull. And that will give you and, and as you say, you can literally, it'll pull to the point that you need it. And as long as this is kept reasonably tight, that's the trick. Having this loomy bit nice and tight means you've got somewhere to get your hands underneath and work it. If you're trying to do this flat on your bench, you might accomplish it, but it'd be a lot, a lot trickier. All right, so that one's just looped through. And then I tie off with the third one um, and the three knots. Three three runs and loops. Um, they give me basically the, um, the look I wanted. So if I keep going with that, I'll end up with one of these. See, easy as that. How how close am I? Oh, I'm pretty close in my guesstimates. Look at that. How was that for asking it in? <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I, I just sort of guess things. Go with. I'm not too worried. The other thing too is when I did my research, these can end up very rough. They often end up broken and frayed and some of them sag. Well, they were not perfect. So the, the resin aftermarket one looked absolutely perfect. Like it was brand new out of the factory. 
but I want to do mine a little bit weathered and sort of banged up. So I don't mind that there's the odd bit that's sort of fluffing out and some of them a little bit lumpy because that's what would happen. These things, because they were bumpers, they slammed up against wharves and bumped into other things, you know. That's what they were for. They were to protect the ship's hull to stop it chipping and denting. And these things were easily replaced um, or even repaired because they're just basically made out of made out of fabric, whatever was going. So I'll keep going and I'll knock this one off and then I'll make a big fat one for the bow of the ship. Well, tank, well, schlepper. <laughs> And about 10 minutes later, it's all done. And it really doesn't take that long. So the whole process takes about 15 minutes and do two runs in about half an hour. Once you had it all worked out, I mean, it took me probably an hour or so to kind of figure it out. Now, here's the important next step, because this will untwist. If you undo this now, the twist will disappear and the whole thing will just kind of unravel, which happened to me in the first one. Then I'll try to retwist it up again. Didn't get as good a result. So while it is still clamped, the trick here is to... Get some, this is PVA white wood glue. Of course, it's called Sellies here in Australia, but you probably, Sellies Aquid here, but you probably get it under some other name. It's just a white wood glue. I think there's a thing called Elmer's glue or something in the States. Is that it? Made out of foam. I'm hunting wabbits. Yeah. <laughs> um, and this is all I did. Very, um, shouldn't be doing this over the modeling bench, but I'm being careful. And being water-based, if I mess up and spill this all over my mat, I can wipe it off. So there we go. And I found, just wipe it on, twist it round. Be fine. And it did the trick. As you saw that other one, I'll bring it out in a sec. This one is all wobbly. Of course, it's just still string. This is just cotton. Right? Just cotton string that's bound up. It, it'll all flop around and, you know, uh, it'll bunch up and it'll separate. But once this is on, it'll go turn magical. Well, it'll stiffen up. It's basically Viagra for um, cotton. <laughs> yes. So I'm doing it on, on this side. I'll show you in a sec. On the other side is where the knots are. Because that running knot that I did leaves a line of cotton on the other side. So this is the side that I'll expose to the world and that'll be seen on the model. And the, uh, the side where they're running knots, that's all going to be hidden. So there we go. Smooth off any furries that I can see. Keep it nice and tight. Right, now that will need to sit for a while. I left mine overnight so it's set completely. And once that happens, once it has set overnight, huh, that's not floppy anymore, right? It's a nice hard one, nice hard stiff one. So um, that's what you want. Now on the reverse side, can you see there's the running the running knot? Kind of a bit twisted there, but um, you can see there's the running knot, okay? So there it is. So basically that can be pretty well hidden when it's turned over. And that's the look I'll get. It won't matter too much because I'll run a wash over that and um, It'll be all painted in. It'll all just look like what it's supposed to look like anyway. Now this will probably be a little bit too long. The idea is because it's glued now, I'll be able to cut off the ants and um, set it up how I want. So um, that should be enough to wrap from the stern, and it just tucks around the end of the stern, all the way through to the point of the bow. And then the bow is going to have another piece put on which bulges out even further. It's exactly the same principle, but I'm going to make it a bit fatter, and I'll taper the ants, and then... All of that should come together and give me a bumper for my lamb waffle schlepper. <laughs> there we have the lamb washer schlepper. It's basically all assembled. I've just got to finish that front bumper. I'll get that done before the next video. But it's um, it's all gone together very nicely. Uh, the kit is beautifully moulded. There's, there's nothing wrong with all the detail. It's absolutely excellent. Lots of options and opening up hatches and doing things. I've got to put the um, clear parts in for all the uh, the portholes and the, the front windscreen there but I can't do that till I actually paint the inside so my next video will be painting this and it's got a really funky camo scheme I'm going to put on
So I'll do all that and we'll, we'll get the bumpers fully assembled. I'll show you how I'm going to fix those to it. But it is a lovely kit. Uh, every part fitted perfectly. Oh, except for there was a couple of little odds and ends at the back here, which it wasn't so much they didn't fit. It's they were different versions. Because remember, this has got about three different versions. And uh, the uh, locating holes were round and the pins were square. So it wasn't a big deal. A little bit of filing and sanding. But, but apart from that, everything else went together spot on. I was really impressed with this kit. Um, no flash. Very clean, beautifully moulded. Can't say enough about it. Joy to build. I'd build another one. Had so much fun. I'd build the other version next time. So, um, yeah, that's the Land Washer Schlipper. Uh, when I come back next time, we'll be painting it. So that's it for this video. So that's goodbye from Australia, and it's Huru from Harry Houdini. Mm -hmm.